All right, what's going on, Giants fans? It's Bobby Skinner here with my Giant Factor for Week 3. We didn't put it out on Week 2 because it was Thursday Night Football. But Week 3, Giant Factor. Who on the Giants needs to be a bigger factor than normal for the Giants to have a win and win the way they're supposed to against the Atlanta Falcons? And for this week, I am going Kenny Galladay. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Kenny Galladay. I think Kenny Galladay is his third game with the New York Giants. You know, he hasn't been um, involved a ton as far. He's been involved, but he hasn't been getting those yards, those touchdowns yet. You know, it hasn't came. Um, and now it is time versus the Falcons. Now, he was limited in practice this week and was listed as questionable with a hip injury. Judge says it wasn't the same as last year, but he was running routes in practice on Friday. So I, I fully expect him to play. And last season when he played the Atlanta Falcons, he had six catches for 114 yards. And he not only just had that, he had that on seven targets, which was one of the best completion percentage games of his uh, career at 85%. Also, the Falcons have their number one cornerback out in A.J. Terrell. So Fabian Moreau, who probably will cover him. So it's going to be a nice matchup for Kenny Galladay. And I've actually been a fan of Kenny Galladay so far. I know it hasn't been anything flashy the first two weeks. The week one, I was very bothered by the way they used him. You know, they didn't really, they didn't use him at all until the fourth quarter. They didn't target him. They didn't put him at the top of progressions. But in week two, I actually thought, you know, it was a decent job. You know, he was targeted eight times, nine if you included defensive pass interference, which was a big play. And he had three catches for 38 yards. Not great. Um, two catches he could have made, but I think him and Jones are still working out some chemistry where Jones, you know, can you maybe take a little bit off the ball, not because, he, like, Jones sometimes, and Kurt Warner talked about this this week, and something we talked about is can sometimes try to be too perfect with Galladay. Give him a shot. Now, you don't want to be, you know, throwing up ducks where guys can come and help and get in double coverage, but give him a shot to adjust to a ball. He's a contested catch king for a reason. And I think he's had an impact on Darius Slayton getting open and possibly having two touchdowns last week if he didn't have a drop. He had a big play versus Denver. You can't tell me that Sterling Shepard having 16 catches for 207 yards isn't impacting it. So he is helping. You know, teams are respecting him deep and they're giving the safety help. But right now he's getting the third most yards on the New York Giants and and you can't have that and it's not going to last. He will most likely lead this team in yards by the end of the year. Maybe Shepard does, but like he's like you'll think of Kenny Galladay as the true blue wide receiver one by the end of this season. Um, and this is the game to flex those muscles and show why you were paid $17 million, why you were brought in to be that number one option for uh, for Daniel Jones. But this week, you know, you can't just be a distraction. You need to perform and, and stuff stats, especially after his, you know, his outburst with uh, Garrett, which, you know, I, is fine. Like, like that happens. But you know what? Maybe let's put some of that to bed. Let's, uh, let's you know, get some yards, score some touchdowns. Like, I want either 100 yards or a touchdown out of Kenny Galladay. And why not both, you know, against a weak Falcons defense? Now, just Jason Garrett's offense has been a lot of very much like, and this is when people talk about Daniel Jones staring guys down. He definitely does. But it's a lot of pre-snap read. And then, okay, we're going to this side based off of the coverage, and we're reading this defender, and this defender's making the decision where I'm going. So... That doesn't really work with with Kenny Galladay, though. Like, you need to target Kenny Galladay, and he's always going to have that coverage shaded to him, which is going to stop you if you're doing all pre-snap stuff from from working to him. So what do you do? High to low. Where true, pure progressions of one, two, three. You know, like, after the snap, we're going seeing what the coverage is, and that's where, that post-snap, that's when we're making our decisions, not pre-snap, which is a lot of what Jason Garrett has done. Um, You know, and I, I did a breakdown of how uh, you know, they had Kenny Galladay going deep on one play. They had Sterling Shepard on a crosser and uh, Kadarius Tony on a drag drive route, which is like a backside sale concept, but it's a three level read high, mid, low. And it ended up being a 19 yard catch uh, for Sterling Shepard. And if the linebacker played back, it would have been a nice big gain for Kadarius Tony. And if the safety didn't, uh, you know, bail to the sideline, then, you know, Daniel Jones could have had a one on one with Kenny Galladay. So that's the kind of stuff we need to see. And Jason Garrett did do that more versus Washington. But at the end of the game, when they needed points in those final two drives, they went back to their pre-snap curl stick kind of concepts, and that just and I think that is why Kenny Galladay was frustrated on the sideline, is because he wasn't really even looked at, you know, and that was by design from the offensive coordinator. So make Kenny Galladay the number one read in your high to low stuff, and and tr- and make an effort to target him. Make an effort to target him. You don't want to force bad passes. But with Kenny Galladay, the type of receiver he is, he's never going to have great separation numbers. You kind of do want to force the issue with him sometimes. We talk about big plays. We don't want to have the best completion percentage on deep ball concepts at the end of the year. We want to have we want to be the best in yards on those. And Jones has been targeting down the field, so it's been 
like the offense has been all right so far. They have moved the ball. So make Kenny Gall their number one read in your high to low stuff. Um, and Daniel Jones, give him some back shoulder stuff. You don't got to pit it perfect placement every time. Um, we need to score touchdowns week this week, not kick field goals. And Kenny Galladay is a big re- uh, way to not be get stuck kicking field goals. When you get in the red zone, go for the touchdown. And there, the defensive pass interference last week was a play I loved. It was a stick concept to the right. He had Kenny Galladay one on one on the left. It was his you know alert route, and he went to it. He went for the shot. I want that. I want that type of stuff. And on second and eight, I don't want third and four. I want shots. Or I want that ball going past the sticks. And if it's not going past the sticks, it's because they're covering past the sticks and you got an easy check down. So, like, subscribe. Check out all the other stuff. We'll have a pregame show live tomorrow. Podcast out Monday. Recapping a Giants win. I am saying it. The Giants will win. We appreciate you guys. See you on the next video. Until then, let's go Big Blue.